good to see you finally. We've yeah, done this on it's the nice phone. to see you as well. We've done this on the phone a couple of times. So um, I know you came back uh, home to Canada over the weekend. And of course, we're greeted by our wonderful weather here in Southern Ontario. Um, where were you at? Were you out in Vegas training or what was the, the scoop? No, I was at, um, at Co uh, ATT in Coconut Creek, Florida. Oh, awesome, awesome. Still much better weather than we've got here. So how was that? Yeah. Who have you been uh, working with for this camp? Yeah, I mean, it was awesome, obviously, being in, in Florida with, the, with that weather. Um, and so when I was there, I had a, a, the opportunity to work with, like, so many of the girls. Um, actually, the last, like, two days that I was there, Joanna came, and so I got to train with her a tiny bit. Um, but other than that, there, there was like all the, the normal girls that they have there, like Michelle Montague's there, uh, the two sisters, and they're, they're there. And, um, but yeah, t a ton now that I'm back at home, it's back to the same NTT crew with t shirt Cody, Mike, all of them. Good stuff. And I actually spoke to Michelle Montague just a few weeks ago. She's got the Challenger series coming up and then Joanna back in the gym. That's good to hear. Was there any talk? Cause it, I've kind of heard she might be questioning the retirement uh, right now. Uh, you know, I, unfortunately, I don't, I don't know. Like she, you know, she's, she's not so close with me. So she wouldn't, she wouldn't let me in on these little secrets, but um I mean, I'm hoping she's in the gym, so I'm hoping, and she uh, she looks great, like she's fit. It's not like when she took her time off when she retired. It doesn't look like she retired. Like she's looking, she looking lean and mean. Well, that's good to hear, and I have no doubt you're going to be looking lean and mean coming into this fight. And let's get to it. I mean. We kind of got some news in the last couple of days. Courtney Casey is out. You've got a new opponent coming in. Gabrielle, Gabriela Fernandez, when did you get the news? How did you find out about this? Uh, so when I was in Florida, it, it actually was kind of bad because I have the uh, like Canadian phone plan, but if I were to try to do it in the States, it'd be like $10 a day in addition. So it just like was, didn't make sense. So I just got a phone there to use just for data and, uh, and make phone calls, whatever. And so I would only check my Canadian phone every couple of days. So I don't even know exactly which day it was. Mick messaged me and he said, hey, Courtney's out, um, but like Fernandez, she'll step in. And so I don't know if I like, hopefully it was just that day. You know, I don't want to look bad to Mick or anything. And uh, I said, sounds good. And then my team and then you know the the next day I had the contract um but yeah I uh it was like whatever I think of, about a week ago well I feel your pain with the U.S. phone plan or really traveling anywhere I always wind up buying a sim from the local country because our phone plans are not good let's be honest seriously like it's crazy now, the good news is you do have, I guess, just about a month to prepare for Gabriella. Um, from what you've seen of her so far, what's your take on her as an opponent? You know, I think it's a good matchup. She's southpaw kicker. And um, so, yeah, you know, we're, we've changed the game plan and we're preparing for her instead of Courtney now. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think it's going to be good. Well... What makes this interesting to me is you've got another Brazilian newcomer, so it's a bit of an unknown factor, but she is on a good streak coming uh, from LFA. When it comes to preparing for fights just in general, are you a big game planner or is it more focusing on yourself? Um, you know, of course you have a little bit of game planning. Like, you know, I've obviously watched her and my team watches her. But, you know, at the end of the day, you never know how they're going to come in. And you know, we'll have a little bit of a plan, but it's all about me and, like, what, what we're doing and what we can control. So that's, that's mainly kind of the focus now. And I mentioned that previous fight against another Brazilian newcomer, Natalia Silvia. Obviously, that didn't go the way you wanted it to. But with a bit of time now, what are the takeaways from that fight for you? Uh, yeah, you know, you learn you learn something from every camp and uh, every fight. And, you know, un unfortunately, I didn't walk away being the winner of that fight. 
but um but i feel like you know i i really i did learn a ton from that fight a loss forces you you know it forces you to to learn and to to really like work on a lot of things and um i i feel like in that fight i was like d trying to do do too much i was trying to make it a show i was trying to do all this like i i just have to go in there and fight i have to focus on fighting and winning the fight not not get all caught up in like the hype and how exciting it is and you know i i really do i love competing and i enjoy being in there but i have to focus on it being a fight how valuable because that was your second ufc fight how valuable is that 15 minutes of cage time because for those of us like myself who've only ever you know hit focus pads or hit a heavy bag and haven't been in active competition what I've been told from almost every fighter is there is no substitute for actual cage time. There's no substitute at all. You, no matter what you do in the room or anything, there's no substitute for literally active competition. And for me to be able to do that for 15 minutes, you know, it just, it, it will, it pays so well, like, you know, for knowledge, for, for everything. Well, that's good to hear. And, you know, good to hear that you can always find some positives in it. And obviously, you're going to be pumped up for this one. One of the other things I wanted to ask you about, though, is that like, I've followed you for a while on social media, but I'm not a huge social media guy. I don't, it's counterintuitive because I'm a writer and I cover this sport, but I don't stay glued to my phone. I don't follow social media religiously. But I've noticed that you've kind of become more interactive with your social media. You're doing the MMA is fucked series. You've got some polls going out. I'm just curious if there was any reason that you kind of started reaching out more and if you've seen it kind of pay off in terms of followers and the fan interaction. Yeah, um, so I am like the same. Like I'm, I look forward to being done fighting and not have to worry about social media at all. I, I'm going to be like one of those people that has a landline only and like leave a message. Like don't, don't talk to me. I'm not going to have a cell phone, nothing but when I'm done. I mean, maybe I will. We'll see. But right now, that's one of my uh, my thinking. But um, yeah, I just I didn't really realize how important social media was and like engaging with the fans and and really like kind of showing who I am because people don't know who I am. And so for me to to show my personality, it it makes it more of like a uh, a bit more intimate. And so that's why I I've been trying to be more active on social media. It, and in addition, with that comes better sponsorship and like more eyes on the fight and and everything. So it's kind of all encompassing. I know at one point the UFC was even pushing it. You would get like a bonus if you got the most followers gained in a month and that kind of stuff. Are they still kind of doing that for Twitter and whatnot? Um, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe they still do that with like all their, their maybe top 10 fighters. Um, I don't know about that. Uh, but uh, but I know that, you know, if you if you – do have a good like social media following you know you are more likely to get better fights oh, of course a fight's always a fight but um but you know i think i think there definitely are perks of having a large following one of the things that kind of drew me to this line of questioning was one of the polls you put out not even a poll i think it was just a question and you actually had one of the best answers i think you could possibly have for what amounts to an opinion but you said what fight in history would you change the outcome of and you said dc evens the score with jones at ufc 214 i'm gonna let you, you answer this in your own words why that fight you know i think like that's crazy because it would it would make it make the whole series with them so much more exciting everyone loves like a trilogy fight everyone everyone loves seeing two people like go at it again and again and like who can be victorious this time and so i just think that uh, that it would it would just be a hype fight i love i love watching those two fight and uh, i think it'd be a cool one
Absolutely. And I, you know what? Like I said, I think it's the most correct answer you can have for something that's purely opinion because it was my immediate answer was, yeah, that's the one. There's lots of fights in history. You go, GSP, Sarah. Okay, GSP lost and his Canadians were like, oh no, but he came back and honestly beat him like he owed him money. Um, yeah. And it probably helped his career. It probably gave him that fire he needed to go on and become a dominant champ. But DC Jones, DC loses the title. And then wait, wait a minute. We got a failed drug test. Now DC's the champ again. Jones is suspended and we never get the conclusion of that trilogy. So yeah, exactly. totally on board. Totally on yeah. board with that. Um, but I got to ask you now, John Jones is coming back just a few weeks after your fight. How do you think he's going to look at heavyweight against Cyril Gan? You know, I think he's going to look good. Like, John Jones is one of those guys that's just naturally so talented. Like, he's he's just too, he's just so good. And he's looking huge. Like, you know, I, uh, I think that, I think that he's going to take it again. I, I don't know, man. He's just so good, you know? Well, it's going to be interesting. The last fight I covered last year in person was the Paris card. It was my first time. I had to make the trip to Paris to get a chance to cover an event there. I had to do it. Um, I'd never been to France. It was only my second time to Europe. So got to see Cyril gone. He's fantastic as well. I think that's going to be a great fight. I think your fight's going to be a great fight as well on February 25th. Now, you're getting one pretty early this year. What's the goal for 2023 for you? I want to be active. I, uh, you know, just like I said before, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. And uh, I want to fight. I don't want so much of a layoff since, since from my last fight. I, I want to, you know, God forbid I take no damage this fight and I can get back home and start, you know, another training camp that, that Monday or whatever, two Mondays from, from after the fight or something like that, you know. I uh, I want to I want to be super active this year and and really like climb the ranks. You know, I meant to ask you about that. You did have a bit of time off uh, between fights. Was your last fight in June? Was that June? That was. Uh, I think it was June. Yeah. yeah, I always forget. Once it's over, I forget. <laughs> <laughs> what was the the reason for the layoff? Was there just nothing available? Did you have some nagging injuries? Uh, no. You know, I don't. I. I'm not entirely sure kind of like what the the thing was because I asked my management in uh, November and then it was just like, I don't, I don't know if like they talked to the UFC and the UFC wasn't like putting things on. Like, so I'm not entirely sure what it, what it was. Oh, you know what I think it was? It was, they were talking about a Canada card. And so we're like, oh, maybe we'll wait for that card because it because they were saying it was rumor that it was going to be like January. So that's I think that's what it what what part of it was. But um, but yeah, now moving moving forward, you know, I assume when when the fight's done, I'm going to be like kind of on like trying to get something right away. Absolutely. And, you know, we'd heard about a Canadian card. Originally, there was talk about September. Then, yeah, more towards the start of this year. Maybe now with the gambling thing corrected in Ontario, you're allowed to bet on UFC fights again here. Uh, you know, maybe we're going to see something in the next few months. Fingers crossed we get something announced. I hope so. Man, me and Mike Malott, we always talk about how sick it would be to fight in Toronto. And uh, yeah, it would. I, I want to fight at home so bad. Well, I hope it gets done. Last question I'll ask you for today, then I'm going to let you go. Do you have a prediction for this one? How do you see getting it done on February 25th? I just see my hand getting raised at the end. All right. Well, looking forward to it. Jasmine, Rep and Niagara top team. A lot of good killers coming out of there. T. Shea and the guys. So you have a great day. Looking forward to the fight. Sounds good. Thanks again for having me. Always welcome. Take care.